saving of little pigs makes the proper care of bread sows most important. Shade, green pasture, and ground free of parasites are essential to the health of prospective mothers. Feed dispensers containing concentrates should be used in following a recommended diet throughout the life of the sow. Feeders placed on hard surfaced platforms minimize waste and feed contamination. A steady supply of fresh, clean water made available under sanitary conditions is essential to the well-being of the animals. Proper care ensures profits. Portable houses afford the bread sows shelter, warmth, and comfort. Green feed, sunshine, and exercise are highly important, and herdsmen should be alert to segregate sows whose appearance indicates they are ready for farrowing. Concrete walks and runways can be easily cleaned with a hose. They provide convenience and sanitation. Concrete is becoming indispensable around the modern piggery. Of several kinds of farrowing houses, some of which are portable, this type is quite popular, housing one sow in each of two sections. Old straw or other used bedding should be removed to protect the health and help ensure the safe birth and early life of the little pigs. Proper preparation for the coming confinement requires the thorough cleaning of interiors, particularly floors and walls. Old droppings must be scraped from the floor and other accumulations of dirt and dust completely eliminated if the highest degree of cleanliness is to be achieved. Then floors and walls should be thoroughly sprayed or washed with an approved disinfectant as a further precaution against infection from disease, germs, or bacteria. Some swine men use a strong solution of lye and boiling water with which to wash walls and floors. Careful handling will avoid burning of hands and clothing. After the interior has thoroughly dried, Clean, fresh bedding should be arranged for the comfort of the prospective mother and her brood. Some operators prefer chopped straw because it allows the little pigs more unimpeded freedom of movement. Be sure to spread the straw well under the guardrail so that young pigs lying behind it to escape being crushed by the sow will still have ample bedding. Before the sow is placed in the farrowing house, she should be thoroughly washed with soap and water to remove all dirt or foreign matter. The teats, udder, and surrounding area should be well scoured to protect the young pigs from contamination while nursing. When the sow is ready to enter the farrowing house, take plenty of time and care, guiding her gently in order to avoid any possibility of injury either to the sow or her unborn brood. A heat lamp, well shielded to prevent burning or short-circuiting, will afford the young pigs a degree of heat comparable to that of the mother's body. When all preparations are complete and the sow comes to farrow, her owner can feel secure in having used modern methods of sanitation to protect his stock investment. The sow's readiness to give birth can be usually determined by the presence of milk in her udder. Carefully, she settles down to await farrowing. Modern swine men have proved by experience that no detail of farrowing is more important than the presence of someone to receive and care for the little pigs immediately upon arrival. As each little pig appears, it is caught up by the attendant who removes the membranous birth sac, breaking it first where it covers the snout so the pig can get its first breath of air. Apparently, the idea of a pig in a poke had its origin with Mother Nature. It is well to have plenty of clean material handy with which to dry the new arrivals. After a gentle rub down and removal of all extraneous matter, the baby pig is placed beneath the heat lamp. This keeps the little ones warm and facilitates drying. 
It also minimizes the possibilities of the sow crushing the pigs until she completes the business at hand and issues her first call for dinner. Too much stress cannot be placed upon the importance of having someone with the sow during the farrowing period. One of the attendant's most vital operations is the care of the umbilical cord through which the young has received oxygen and nourishment from the mother prior to birth. The baby pig should be placed in a position where it can be held still while a piece of string or heavy thread is used to tie off the umbilical cord before it is removed. The cord should be tied off about one inch from the pig's body. And about two inches from the tie-off, the cord should be broken. It should not be cut, but shredded off, which reduces bleeding and facilitates healing. The added precaution of dousing the umbilical cord in iodine lessens the likelihood of infection. Raising pigs is a highly competitive business, and as nature is often slow and wasteful, it pays man to come to her assistance. Ear notching as a means of identification may be done almost immediately, or within a few hours after farrowing, with notching clippers made for this purpose. At the same time, the eye or wolf teeth should be clipped to prevent laceration of the sow's udder by the little pigs when nursing. Clipping of teeth should not be delayed as the operation becomes more difficult when the teeth have hardened. The remaining stumps should be swabbed with an antiseptic to prevent all possibility of infection. Several methods may be used to prevent anemia, one of which is to give each pig a pill containing iron and other minerals on the third and eighth day after birth. A small quantity of earth in which mineral sulfates have been mixed should be placed where the pigs can root in it. This too prevents anemia. Where the soil is known to contain the necessary minerals, the earth alone is sufficient. On the third day after farrowing, the sow's udder may be painted several times with a solution containing water, molasses, ferrous sulfate, and copper sulfate, also to prevent anemia. Application with a paintbrush to the udder and surrounding area makes the formula easily accessible so the pigs will get their required minerals while nursing. This formula is almost the same as the first, with one exception. A cup of sugar replaces one of molasses and makes the solution thinner so that it can be squirted into the pig's mouth by using an ordinary oil can. Whichever method is used, be certain that each little pig gets the required mineral supplement. Each year, the farrowing stall becomes more popular. The raised partition protects the little pigs from crushing by the mother's body, even when nursing. It gives them freedom of movement to and from the heat lamp and room for exercise. Its construction is simple, and it's easy to clean and keep clean. Should the mother sow die in farrowing, or for any other reason be taken from the little pigs, the litter may be saved by feeding liquid or dry substitutes from sanitary feed dispensers that afford them a constant supply of nourishment. Dry shavings and a heat lamp provide the motherless pigs with warmth and comfort. This subject has been presented by the Union Pacific Railroad to encourage the use of modern methods of protective care and scientific feeding employed by experienced and successful swine men. Methods which have proved it pays to provide the best possible environment and management in raising brood sows and their litters. Ensuring profits by saving little pigs.